So there was a recent monk debate in Toronto on the question of the refugee crisis in Europe. And I was looking for the results of the debate because the debate, on the pro side, there was Louise Arbor and Simon Schuma. And on the con side, there was Mark Stein and Nigel Farage. They started out as 77% of the audience was for, was the pro, on the pro side, meaning that they were for the, the refugees being accepted into Europe. And the, con, and the con side, of course, was then 23% of the audience were against it. They, the Monk debate was a great debate, and they didn't, they didn't show the results because the, the audience had to leave the, the hall and then vote outside the hall. So they, in the video, they didn't have the results. So I looked up the results, and the results was a win for the con side. The number from, seven, it was 77% pro, it dropped to 55% pro. And then, of course, the con side was 23%, and it rose then to 45%. So that was a debate win for the con side. And I want to just to quickly discuss some of the issues that, that came up during the hour and a half monk debate. So I think the, for the, I think the reason the pro side lost is because they failed to address the facts. The, the con side, which had Mark Stein and Nigel Farage, they hammered the pro side on the facts, the Cologne uh, crisis, various nasty uh, rapes and things that have been happening, especially in Sweden. The, I guess Malmo, Sweden is now the rape capital of Europe because of the, of the refugees. And they, they, the con side hammered away on the facts and the, the terrorist threat and the increased sexual assaults and violence because of the refugees. And the pro side did not address those facts. And this is what they should have done, and they did not. This, and this is not a nice pro, a side. This is not a nice position. But essentially, the pro side, who are, who are for refugee humanitarian aid, this is what they should have said. Yes, we must accept the refugees. We are humanitarians. We think it's for the future. We think it's a peaceful, peaceful solution. But also, yes, we must accept that there's an increased risk of terrorism because of ISIS. And yes, some ISIS people will come along with refugees. And yes, they will not be uh, sufficiently screened. And yes, we also have to accept that the culture of these refugees is different. And that will necessarily, apparently, that something like 60 or 70% of, of the refugees are also men, uh, men. And yes, these people are going to engage in more violence and lawlessness and sexual assault and rape and etc. That's what they should have said, the pro side. They should have just been right out and open with it and said, yes, we want to be human, humanitarian. Unfortunately, you're going to increase. We, we have to then be complicit and accept an increased risk of violence in Europe. That's what they should have done. But no, they didn't. They hid away from that and they tried to downplay the facts, ignore the facts. One of them, the, the woman, the Louise uh, Arbor, just ignored those facts and said we, sh we shouldn't be discussing these, this violence and and the threat and the fear monger we should just be accepting the we just be uh, discussing the humanitarian that was a mistake she should not have done that and ultimately that was a contributing to the loss of the pro side but that's what they should have done they should just have been honest about the situation we can't close their door we can't close their doors we shouldn't do that because of all those people who are desperate and yes ninety eight percent ninety five percent of those people are peaceful people who just want to escape the hellhole of the Middle East right now in Northern Africa. But they also should have said, yes, we then have to accept a higher risk because of what's going on in terrorism in the world. Yes, we have to accept a higher risk of that and accept a higher risk of social unrest and rape and things like that. That's what they should have done. And that, because that's the position and that's what they ha they'd have to accept. Okay. Uh, some other points. There was also, it seemed like the pro side was resisting the question of assimilation. And thus, they, they also would have to be complicit then in some social unrest. The pro side should not have just rejected, should not have decided just to not talk about the whole idea that, that refugees have to become at least partly the culture that they are moving to. They cannot remain as they are culturally, whether that's food, that's dress, that's ideas, that's religion, that's philosophy, etc. They must at least accept some tenets of the place they are to move. And that's essentially what assimilation is. 
But the, again, the pro side ignored that and they should have discussed it. Some other questions that came up, I think, that were really good in the debate. So the, the con side just was asking whether these are genuine refugees, people who are genuinely in fear and fleeing countries, or are they economic migrants? And there is some data to suggest that some of these people, especially the people who came to Canada, uh, I think we accepted something like 25,000 last year. And I think we'll, we'll probably be taking more now, maybe up to 50,000. Some of these people did not come from uh, refugee camps, for example. Some of them actually moved from apartments that, were, that they had in Syria or Turkey, etc. So some of these people are definitely economic migrants, but what is the proportion? I don't know. But there's no doubt that people who are genuine refugees are people who are in need of help and humanitarian aid would suggest that they be accepted. Another question, should immigrants change the culture in which they are moving to? Is that, a, is that proper? Is it proper for you, to, if you were to move to Japan, would it be proper for you to, to start an activist group of fellow Canadians as I am or fellow Americans and try to change Japanese culture in Japan? Would that be right? Would that be a good thing? Would Japanese people, would they not resent you for doing that? So that's another question. Uh, further, should cultural practices be sanctioned when they are against the law? So the Kansai brought up questions like genital uh, mutilation, sh uh, Sharia courts, which apparently are, are they do have now in Britain, like something like 80 Sharia courts now exist in Britain. Is that something that should be permitted? Um, these various cultural practices that uh, may be against certain laws, especially child rights and women's rights. And one more uh, issue that I thought was very good. So, and it actually happened right at the very end with Mark Stein and his closing remarks. And it actually wasn't discussed much in the debate and it should have been because it was an interesting issue. So similar to the brain drain. So you may know the brain drain is when universities, have, uh, Western universities have had policies for a long time that they've, they've given scholarships to, to people with high IQs and high SAT scores to leave their home countries and to uh, get a good education, a good university education in the West, such as in France or in the United States, etc. And then they're expected, of course, to return to their countries to then bring back their education and their expertise to help their home countries. But the problem is that many do not, many stay, many do not want to go back and many stay. And so that was called brain drain. So that was, that's, that was a few decades ago that that concept was invented. But similar to brain drain, is it right for countries to accept the mostly moderate politically refugees? But does that not contribute to the country that they are leaving behind sinking into further despotism and unrest? So the point is, is that, and this is what Mark Stein brought up at the very end, he said, what, isn't there a problem with taking on these refugees? Because yes, these people do not like what's going on in their countries. They're, they're very likely to be more moderate politically. But if we accept these people out of those countries, who's left behind? We have people who either cannot leave or even more desperate than the refugees that can leave, or these people are political radicals and actually accept the regime. And so in a sense, we are, we are complicit in creating and perpetuating these failed states because we are accepting their citizens that perhaps if they had the power, they could have moderated and taken over and modernized their own countries. But if we're accepting them when they're fleeing those countries, then they're not around to modernize it. And then now what do you do, right? So the countries that they're leaving behind become worse. They sink more and more into war, into violence, into uh, medieval kind of uh, societies and governments. So, um, but anyways, it was a good debate and there were a lot of great issues discussed.